Hello everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be covering a fundamental concept that everyone should master when using Sigma. And that concept is table groupings. So what is a table grouping and how do they work? Let's hop into it. In order to demonstrate what they are and how they work, I've created a very simple data set where we are looking at our orders by product type and year, and then we've got the total order value. We want to find out what is the average order value for each product type, and then is that average order value increasing or decreasing over time? In order to do this, we need to first calculate the average order value for each product type. To do this in Sigma, I go to my product type column and I drag it up to this grouping section, this grouping box. Next, I'm going to pull in my order value and I'm going to change this aggregation to average since we're looking for the average. So what did Sigma do here? It basically organized or grouped all of the order numbers that had arts and entertainment and put them together in its own section and then calculated the average order value for each product type or grouped by each product type. We can see this even better when we collapse this section of the table, which now shows us the average order value for each product type. Just a little bit easier to see. If we'd scroll down, it'll still be there. Next, since we want to see if this value is increasing or decreasing each year, we're going to add in the year field to our group by state. So let's look at what happens when I pull this into the same this is what we're looking for because we want to find the average order value for each year for each product type, but we lost our product type average. So what did Sigma do here? Basically, Sigma is concatenating or combining each of these fields in order to calculate the group by statement. So it's the average order value for each combination of product type and year of the order. In order to have both of those values where we're finding this value plus the product type or the average for the overarching product type. I can drag my year down to this section and then again take the same average or excuse me the same order value field and change that to average as well. We're going to expand this section so we can see these values in here and now we can see our average order value for each product type, as well as that average order value for each year. You will note that Sigma is thinking about each kind of subset or secondary group by statement as it relates to the first one. So this is the first important concept to understand when you're thinking about group by statements is that they work in a hierarchy. They go top to bottom or left to right. Once you build a hierarchy, you're unable to come out of that hierarchy. So for example, if I move these two around, we can see that our analysis changes or our, the table order changes and we're shifting the analysis. So we're saying, what's the average order value for 2019? And then what's the average order value for each product type within 2019? Let's come back to this section so we can see our average order value and then look at it if it's increasing or decreasing over time. In order to do this, I want to help us out and build a simple visualization to see the increase or decrease. I'm going to change this to be the average order value by product type. And then I'm also going to change this name to average of order value by, let's do type in year make it easy for us to know what we're pulling in. So we're going to create a child visualization. And you'll notice I've got a bar chart here, but I only have two columns listed in my column list. So what happened here? When we created this child element, we had our parent element collapse to, or, you know, looking at the level of our product type. So Sigma is kind of guessing and saying, hey, when you created this child element, you were looking at this analysis. So you probably want to look at that analysis again, which a lot of times is really helpful, but sometimes it's not. We do want to have our year field in here. So I'm going to come down to the grouping section. In my grouping section, I want to change the level of aggregation that Sigma is displaying my information. So I'm going to click on my grouping section and I'm going to change it to year of order. We can see now that we have those four columns in here. It'd be the same thing as if I had expanded these and then created the child element. 
So it is important to understand the order of operations in which you do it, uh, creating your groupings and your child elements, but you can always go back and change the level when you need to. So now let's build out our chart. Let's pull in everything by the year and let's pull in our average by product type. And now let's add a trellis for the columns. All right, this doesn't look quite right. What is happening here is that we've asked Sigma to display the average order value of product type and then split it out for each year that's listed here. This isn't the correct column. We want to pull in this average order value by type and year. So let's pull this in. We'll remove that one. And now we can see some slight variation, but overall our trends are about the same. So again, it's important to remember how Sigma is thinking about each column in here. Even though you only have one field or one value for each section or each grouping here, you've got one number for each arts and entertainment. Sigma does think about it as that number applying for each of the sub groupings or the sub levels in your group by statement. So when we expand this element, we can see indicated here that this value is repeating across the board. This can be really helpful if you do want that value listed here. Let's say you want to compare the percentage difference between these two different things. You just have to know where to find it. And again, making sure that you're pulling in the correct column. If you're interested in finding out more information about grouping columns, my colleague Haley wrote a wonderful blog about all of the nuances between expanding and collapsing and changing the aggregation levels. Again, this is a really fundamental concept and it is going to unlock everything that you want to build within Sigma because it allows you to create multiple levels of aggregation, then reuse and build on top of and nest all of those calculations. Thanks for following along on the Sigma Made Simple.